Do you know the patterns that are works in your life? Because all of us, we have a pattern that works in our life, spiritually and physically. Thoughts and emotions, they are like brothers and sisters. They are intertwined, they work together. One produces another. We often don't know how to deal with these emotions and thoughts. So this is what leads us to feel like we are not good enough. Every one of us got a different package. And that is because everyone is made unique. And one good thing, or maybe one good news that we all should be happy with, is that our emotions and thoughts are not facts. Learning how to process our emotions and thoughts can be a game changer for our well-being and personal growth. When we are able to acknowledge and work through our emotions, we can shift our mindset and make positive changes in different areas of our lives. There is one saying by Utama that says, Thoughts drives your emotions. What you think, you become. Thoughts and emotions, they are like brothers and sisters. They are intertwined. They work together. One produces another, and then one go back to produce another. They work in a cycle. They receive from each other. So they all work together. And that's why it's really important for us to understand how they work to support our well-being. Many of us struggle with the negative thoughts and emotions. And it's easy to get caught up in patterns of anxiety, self-doubt, and feeling stuck. We might feel like we are constantly fighting internal battle and it's exhausting. Sometimes we try our very best to push these feelings away, but they always seem to come back. Or perhaps we have gotten stuck in a cycle of negative talk. And one of the most biggest challenges we face is that we often don't know how to deal with these emotions and thoughts. So this is what leads us to feel like we are not good enough, or maybe we are not appreciated enough, or maybe we are not strong enough, or even feeling that we are failing somehow. We spend more time wondering, why can't we feel more positive? Or maybe wondering, why can't we seem to shake off these negative feelings, negative self-talks out of ourselves? But here's the thing, processing emotions and reframing negative thoughts is a skill that can be learned. It takes lots of practices, patience, and self-compassion. But at the end of it all, it's worth of all your energy that you put to build that skill. So by learning how to work with these emotions and thoughts can be the only way that can help us break free from that cycle of anxiety, depression, negative thoughts, and negative self-talks, but most importantly, self-doubt. The moment we become honest with ourselves, instead of talking ourselves down, but we come to an understanding of who we are, and what we have got with us. Coming to an understanding and acceptance that we cannot all be equal. That every one of us got a different package. And that is because everyone is made unique. Everyone is on their own journey. Everyone is on their own mission. That's why we all got different packages. So when we understand that, then we come into acceptance of ourselves with everything that we have and even with the environment that surrounds us. Now we become honest with who we truly are and we start living our meaningful life. I want us to try and break this down into practical tips that can help one of us to get to learn this skill of processing emotions and reframing our negative thoughts. The first step is acknowledging and accepting our emotions. I know this might sound really simple, but it's really hard to do. You know, we are often taught to push away the difficult emotions or even situations, or try our very best to distract ourselves from them. But now, quite surprising, it's the opposite of what we have been taught. We need to acknowledge and accept that emotion. Because the truth is that emotions are natural, and they are always trying to tell us something. So when we come to an understanding that these emotions are actually not against us, they are working for us, so they are with us. They're trying to let us know that something is happening. They're trying to get our attention so we can act on something. So when we learn to work with them, not against them, then we can become aware, accept, and acknowledge that this is happening and this motion has come up. So what does this emotion need or want from me? 
This is the meaning of accepting and acknowledging. It's when you accept, you agree that, okay, I understand that this has happened and it's happening to me right now. It's causing me this feeling and I am required to do one, two, three. Step number two, and this is something that I usually do is practicing mindfulness. We might be having different definitions of mindfulness, but it is getting into that stillness. I know most of us have different definitions of mindfulness, but I think we all have same meaning. We just speak it in different languages, but I, I, I hope and I believe that it's just same meaning. So mindfulness is all about being present. And if you have been on this channel long enough, you probably must have heard me talking about mindfulness in just different ways. So we are required to be really mindful, being present in that moment without judgment. That is one thing about mindfulness, that stillness. You do not judge yourself. You do not judge the environment. You do not try to judge or question. It's just to be still and acknowledge and be aware of what is going on, of what is happening in that moment. So in that moment, you are only required to notice. Just only notice the thought, both that is coming in and both that is going out. Don't be caught up with them. Don't try to start figuring out why and questioning. Just to notice. So it's only when you notice that thought, now you can start to see the pattern. Now you can start to realize where is that habit coming from. It's from noticing that thought that comes in and goes out. Now you realize that pattern. You realize that habit. And now the following step after that is to do you know those thoughts. Write down the thoughts you just noticed, the pattern you realized, the habit, the behaviors. Put them down. After you write them down, now you can start asking yourself questions. How did I get here? How did I develop this habit? Does it align with my values? Does it align with my characteristics? Why is it here? Now, when you put them down, why this step is really powerful is because when you write something down, now you only not seeing it now, but you can really focus. You can try to put all your attention to understand why. And as you're writing down, your mind gets that. It can only focus onto that. It helps you. And even when you look at it, if you can just write it somewhere where maybe if you are trying to work, maybe on a breaking that pattern. Now you write it down. When you look at it, it just goes straight into you. It reminds you. It also go back and trigger that thought, even as you're writing it. So when the emotions and feelings become, the, you know, when they join, now they trigger you more to work about or to do something about that habit or pattern that you just noticed. Now, the following step is what I love the most. This is called cognitive restructuring. This is a game changer. This involves identifying negative thought patterns and replacing them with the more balanced and realistic ones. You know, there's some funny thoughts that goes in that you, are, you do not even know how you came up with those thoughts. There's some patterns that are working on our lives. But quite sadly, this is something that most of us are not aware. And I would like to just ask you a question. Do you know the patterns that are works in your life? Because all of us, we have a pattern that works in our life, spiritually and physically. There is one. So if you want to know more about patterns, just drop a comment. Just tell me, just say patterns. If I get like five comments of those people who want to know about patterns, I will do a video about patterns. Just let me know in the comments below. So cognitive restructuring is just forces you, not forces, it just pushes you to understand, identify that negative thought pattern. Not only identify. So after you identify, you're supposed to replace. That's why it's called restructure. So you, it's, there is a, a structure that is working or maybe that system structure that is working in there, but it's not working for your benefit. It's not working for your good. So you need to replace it. So you go there, you restructure the system, the pattern and more realistic ones. Now, according to your values, beliefs and personal characteristics, or maybe to what your calling is or your purpose. So you need to find something that aligns with you. So here it's not about denying your emotions, but finding a way to work with them for your own good or benefit. And one good thing, or maybe one good news that we all should be happy with is that our emotions and thoughts are not facts. They are not. So having that said, that means we can change them in an instant. They can be changed. 
any time that you want. You can change that thought. I'm bringing a new one. You can fire. You can hire. It's just about getting new one, getting out. Bringing in the good one that you want. Get out the one that is not supporting you, supporting your well-being. Personal disrealization has been freeing to me. So when I'm caught up in that negative thought, what I do is I just come quickly to the awareness. You know, I come present to the moment of what is going on. Try to identify that pattern, that thought. Where did it come from? Is it from what I just had? Is it because of maybe the book I read or the news or the music I watched? Where did it come from? Is it from the conversation I just had with colleagues? So if I don't need it, I'm like, not right now, not this moment. I don't need you. I get you out and I bring myself, my mind to focus to what I want. Not only to focus, to think on what I want to think or what I want to be in my mind. So in case you ever thought that I don't know what to do, that is such a good news. They are not facts. Thoughts and emotions are not facts. So don't ever think that there's nothing you can do to change those thoughts. Because the truth is, you can change them any moment that you want. Or maybe when you are ready. And I assure you, because personally, this has been freeing, understanding this. They have worked for me. So if you also put this into practice, those thoughts that are causing you anxiety, the thoughts are causing you depression, those thoughts that have brought self-doubt into you, you no longer feel confident about yourself, about your role. I want you to go back into your mind and try to find and identify that thought pattern that is working. Why are you feeling the way you are feeling? Try to question it the best way you can. Journal it down when you find it. But first you need to accept as we say. Acceptance is really very, very important. If we do not accept it, that means that thing doesn't exist. And if we say it doesn't exist, that means your mind is a liar or thoughts and emotions. They're just nowhere. But they're in you. They're causing you something, whether it's positive or negative. If you think you do not need those feelings, don't push them away. Try to find what are they trying to tell you and try to find a way now. How are you supposed to work with them? What are you required to act on? So as we wrap up this video, I want to remind you that change is possible. It takes practice and yes, lots of practice, patience with yourself, but most importantly, self-compassion. You will have to be kind and very kind with yourself. But at the end of this, it will be all be worthy of the trying, worthy of that patience and love that you just shed on yourself. Because guess who you are doing this for? You are doing this for you, for the better you. So this is a reminder to everyone that is traveling with anxiety, self-doubt, self-negative talk, feeling not good enough. I encourage you to take your time and learn about this process of your emotions. Try and build in the new patterns of your thoughts that are working for you, not against you. Now, before I end this video, I would like to ask you for a favor. If you find it really helpful, that means it can help someone else as well. So help me share with your friend, family, colleague. But don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you on the next episode.